Hi, today I'm gonna to be talking about colors. How do we find color palettes? How do we find colors that maybe complement another color? How do we find shades of colors? And how do we bring these into our designs and web apps and all that stuff? So today we're bringing you the first in a series called Cool Tools. The first thing we should dig into is the most basic probably, and it's HSL or hue, saturation, and lightness. So it's very similar in your color picker to use red, green, blue. If you just change the color profile to HSL or CMYK, you can get different ways of manipulating those sliders. HSL is a very nice way of dialing in your hue and then changing saturation and lightness to get colors that are very similar along the same hue scale. So as far as like the first tool that we're gonna talk about, uh, the first one that I'd like to point out is Coolors, in which you have a bunch of predefined color palettes that other people have submitted, people more color savvy than myself for sure, and you get to find maybe a specific color you like, your brand color, and then you get to find other colors that somewhat mesh with it, like a success or an error color, or just random other accent colors, etc. There's just predefined palettes and you can click and lock in certain ones and then try and find other colors from other palettes as these are locked in. It's a very interesting and just fun clickable way of discovering maybe a color palette you weren't thinking of yet. After that, we're going to be talking about two tools that kind of overlap a bit. And they kind of have a similar purpose, and I'm going to dig into maybe the differences between them in a sec. So first off is Paladin. Paladin is a, a very nice tool in which you're going to take maybe a color from Coolors, plug it in as your main color, and then you can find complementary colors for it. And there's a bunch of different formula there. So it's not just complementary, it's just different types of color relationships, all mathematically driven. So it's a little easier than, well, how do you feel about it? Which one? No, like mathematically, this green lines up with that red. Boom. So there's going to be some cohesion to that. Uh, the other tool I wanted to mention is Adobe Colors, which is very similar to Palatin, except that Adobe Colors has a couple more of those like mathematical formula options. So I have been using Adobe Colors more strictly because there's a little more discoverability just from clicking around and finding stuff. But really, pick whichever one you want. I have no preference there other than the options. Last but not least, let's talk about Tailwind Shades. Before we dig into it, let's talk about how it works. Tailwind Shades basically takes a color and generates lighter and darker shades for it. Ten of them total, five lighter, five lower, something like that. The basic gist is you get a lot of extra colors to use in your designs that match your branding still. It's a thing that's not even new or unique to Tailwind, so if you don't use Tailwind, don't worry about it because your design system might already be using something like it. It's existed in Material for years, I believe Chakra, Native Base, and many more design systems and UI component frameworks are actually using a Shades-like implementation. So if you get these going, you can plug it into a lot of the tools that you have out there already. Another really nice part about Tailwind Shades is that you get to name the colors. It actually names them for you, but you can name it yourself if you want. I recommend letting them name it for you because how many times have we seen blue, light, blue, lighter, blue, lighter, -er, blue, lighter, est. It's gonna happen if you start trying to name your own colors. So just use what they give you. Use cerulean, use amber, use whatever you want but just let them do it. And then when you're bringing it into your application, you're gonna give it a semantic name, which might be primary, secondary, info, error, success, danger. All of these semantic names are then in your app. And when you wanna change that blue to something just slightly lighter, maybe it's a branding decision from higher up, you just change one thing, re-update your shades, change, you know, input that back into your config. And because you've been using primary and secondary, your semantic colors will just work. So keep that in mind as you're doing some of the color stuff. It will definitely help. That concludes this video. If there's anything I missed, anything you'd like to add, tools that I don't know about, comment below, let us know about them. And uh, please hit that subscribe button to get notified when my next videos go live. Thank you.